Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff, and I am sitting here right now with the Xperia Z Ultra. Look how incredibly huge this is. I'm a small person, right? So when I'm holding this thing up to my face, it just looks completely idiotic. But you know what? I think I'm one of the people who can pull it off. Yeah. No, I just I seriously don't care what people think. I mean, I love this thing. This is really a really great font. As you can see behind me, there is a really old dinosaur computer. This is a CRT monitor. There has been so much progression with displays lately, and what I want to talk about is the display that's inside of the Xperia Z Ultra. Sony has been bragging about how they have included their triluminous display that's inside of their TVs inside of the Z Ultra. So naturally, I was curious and I was wondering, you know, how are they getting those colors so rich and vibrant? What exactly is triluminous? So I had a chance to do a lot of investigations and do a lot of measurements to see what it is that they are really doing at this moment in order to get those colors to pop and how they're getting this display to act just like it is. So let's ask the question, what is triluminous? So first I want to explain the details of how LCD screens work. Right now I've got my handy dandy pencil as you can see and actually works quite well. I don't recommend using a pencil or pen, even though they say that they work, I recommend getting a stylus because it actually scratches up really badly that plastic shatterproof screen protector that is on here. So I do see that I have a couple of very fine scratches here and there and that kind of is really annoying. I'm sure I will be replacing it later. Let's start off with the backlight. I use my pencil to draw all these little intricate pictures so that I can try to explain to you how everything is working. So all LCD screens are not actually able to emit light by themselves. They need to have a backlight which shines through the filters of the display, and that is the light that's being emitted that you can see. So the backlight is the single most important part of the display. Many LCDs have a white backlight, now think back, do you remember that time in science class where the teacher held up a prism to the wall and then the teacher put white light through the prism and on the other side of the wall you could see that there was a rainbow that had just magically showed up? So white light is actually composed of every color of the rainbow. So you have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and all the colors that are in between. So just say that we have our backlight here and you can see that the white light is shining through and I'm trying to represent here that you have all the different colors of the rainbow. And like I said, the backlight will shine through and it will go through the filters. You have actually three different filters that make up your three subpixels, red, green, and blue. Three subpixels make up one pixel. And the interesting thing is that red, green, and blue in different combinations are able to make all the different colors that you're able to see. The thing is that these filters are really not so smart. If you look at red, you see that orange is pretty close to it. It's similar in color. So the filters are just not selective enough. So when you have red going through the filter, it blocks all the other colors, but sometimes colors that are similar to it will pass through it as well. So just say that you have a red that instead of being pure red, looks a little bit orangey. So just say that you have the colors now going through green. It blocks out the red and the orange, and it blocks out the blue. You can see that the yellow is pretty similar to it, so sometimes the yellow will pass with it, and it will make kind of a yellowy type of a green. The same thing happens with blue. So this presents a problem because the more pure the colors you have for red, green, and blue, the more colors that your display is going to be able to show. Here, let me show you what I mean. So this is a CIE diagram and all of these colors here is actually the gamut of what your eye can see or the range of colors that your eye can see. So remember when I was saying that sometimes the colors aren't as pure as that they should be. So just say that you have like an orangey red. So let's go ahead and put a dot kind of like where the orangey and red is just say that your green kind of turned out a little bit yellowish. So like yellowy green. And we've also got a blue that came through. Now what we want to do right now is connect these and make a triangle. So with our non-perfect colors, what you can see inside of this triangle is the colors that you're able to combine the red, green, and blue in order to make all the other colors. With this gamut, you can only reproduce the colors that are inside of here. Now just say, for example, that you were to be able to have perfect red, green, and blue. Let's call this red, let's call this green, let's call this blue. Now let's connect these three dots. As you can see here, you have a much broader range of colors that you're able to produce. You can produce all the colors that are inside of this triangle. This is a much wider gamut. So what Sony is doing with the triluminous display is they're making a wider gamut. And like you can see here, gamut is the color space or the range of colors that you can see. And they've done this by trying to purify the greens, the reds, and the blues. 
So with the triluminous display, Sony isn't using a white light anymore. As you can see, the filters just aren't able to be selective enough to pass a pure color. So with a blue LED backlight, they're able to pass it through quantum dots. And the quantum dots are able to basically absorb some of the blue light and re-emit it as pure red wavelengths and pure green wavelengths. And of course, you've also got blue. So you can see there's not all the other different colors of the rainbow sitting out here. So when the red goes through the filter, you're not getting an orangey red. When the green passes through the filter, you're not getting a yellowy green. You're not getting a weird kind of a blue either. So it's all about them quantum dots. So in all technical terms, they've been able to take a blue LED and convert it to RGB light in order to make a wider gamut than you would get on something like a standard LCD. So here we have an image that was released by Sony during their press release. We have two different gamuts here. We have a blue triangle, which says conventional white LED. And then you've got the red triangle that says triluminous display. I think the way I showed you was more involved and complicated, but I think it was a better way of explaining. They're trying to say that you just have more colors available. Yes, so a wider gamut LCD is going to have more colors. Now they don't have any definitions here. They don't have any scale. It, it doesn't say anything. It just has these triangles. And I'm to assume that this blue one here is actually sRGB gamut. It says conventional white LED. For a conventional white LED, the gamut is usually sRGB. Now sRGB is everywhere. sRGB is the range of colors that the internet can show. sRGB is the range of colors that your Android phone can show. sRGB is the range of colors that's shown on Windows. sRGB is everywhere. And as I was trying to show you, your eyes are able to show so much more colors than what's inside of this smaller triangle. So of course, if there is a screen that can show a broader range of colors, our eyes can see more colors than the smaller gamut. So your eyes are gonna be fascinated when they see a display that can show more colors like what you can see in nature. Now I have seen Triluminous for real TVs and the colors are very rich, very vibrant. I've also seen some sites that have done some measurements and they were able to confirm that the gamut was much wider than just the standard type of LCD screen. The challenge for Sony with a mobile display like this one is that they had to try to get the phone display to act like the TV display. The thing is, is that you're kidding yourself if you think that the technology on the TV is exactly the same as what you've got in the phone. So as I said, the challenge for Sony was to get the display to act like the TV. So like I mentioned earlier, I did a bunch of research and measurements to see how they were trying to reproduce the type of technology on the TV to put it on the phone. And now they have called this the triluminous display for mobile. One thing that I did find interesting is that the gamut on this display is a little bit wider than sRGB, a little bit wider in red and a little bit wider in green, but it's not this huge 50% wider gamut like they claim. So I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that most of the pretty colors that you can see isn't so much because of the wider gamut, but more or less because of the processing. So as you can see here, the Z Ultra has a little bit wider gamut than sRGB. You can see that it is a little bit wider in the greens and it's a little bit wider in the reds, but honestly, it is not much wider. At least the color isn't lacking or falling short. As I had mentioned, since most content is based upon sRGB, it's really not a bad thing if it's only sRGB or a little bit wider. You can have perfectly saturated and beautiful colors without going beyond the sRGB range. I just find it a little bit annoying that they just had to say that it had 50% more gamut when it's kind of obvious to me that at this point, it really doesn't. In this first image, when the Bravia engine is on, the gamut is exactly the same as when the Bravia engine is off. So no, turning the Bravia engine on and off does not manipulate the gamut. What I was expecting to see, considering they say that this is a triluminous display and they are converting to RGB backlighting, I thought it would look more or less like the Galaxy S4. This is a measurement that I had taken of the Galaxy S4 and you can see just how much wider the gamut is, especially for the greens. Now we are looking at a comparison for the HTC One. You can see that it passes sRGB with green and yellow a little bit, but it's lacking in red. So definitely I'm still happy that even though it doesn't have the crazy gamut that they're promising, the gamut is wider than other competing displays out there. So the crazy saturated colors and the ranging colors that it appears to have, it's all down to processing. In this gamut measurement, Bravia Engine is on, 
And if you look at the greens, you can see that there is a nice curve that goes up all the way to the left. The same thing happens with the reds. You can see that there's a curve with the reds as well. So they are basically manipulating the saturations to try to get the image to be really punchy, especially when you see colors in nature such as greens and blues. If there was no processing on this, the dots should all be in a straight line and evenly placed. The most obvious processing that they are doing is actually with gamma. If you look at this image here for gamma, those three lines, the red, green, and blue, these are actually the color channels. As I told you that there are three subpixels, and those three subpixels at different combinations and intensities make up every color that you can see. So these three color channels are supposed to be straight along the gamma 2.2 line. But you can see that it's doing something actually really weird. At the right hand side you have highlights like white, in the middle you have midtones such as skin tones, and at the far left you have shadows. So what they have done is they've taken the color channels and they have brought down the gamma to really low. Gamma is much too low for midtones. And then when it starts getting to shadows they're taking the gamma and they're boosting it really high. So basically, when you have really high gamma like this, you're compressing the shadows. And when you compress the shadows like this, you're making the colors darker. And actually, the colors will end up looking more saturated. And with the midtones, they're making the gamma a little bit too low, and that ends up making the colors in that range a little bit too bright. So imagine the type of contrast that you have between them. You have really bright, and then it gets to really punchy. They're saying that they're trying to get skin tones to look really natural and that they're trying to make colors, you know, like landscape colors, greens and blues. They're trying to get those to be really saturated looking. And this is really how they're doing it. The one annoying thing about compressing shadows, if you look at this image, this is near black. This is getting really at the low end of the darks. The three color channels should be following this nice curve, but you can see that they fall well below that curve. So instead of it being a nice even gradient going all the way down from dark gray to black, it's actually making it too dark. So if you look at some dark scenes with a lot of shadows, you end up losing some of the definition in the shadows. So instead of there being a variation in shadows, everything will just end up being black. So definitely there is a lot of processing going on here. It's really your decision of whether you like this or not, but the results are actually quite stunning in some places. With this display, you can really expect some things to look really beautiful, brilliant, just awesome, the most interesting experience that you have ever had with the display so far. But like I had said, they had made the gamma for midtones just a little bit too low. So sometimes people's faces, if someone is really, really light skinned, they look kind of white, ghostly, or washed out. So with what they have done with this processing here, some things look really nice and saturated, and other things just don't look right. My phone right now is updated on the latest firmware, but it does not have the X-Reality engine inside of it yet. I'm going to be making an updated video once they release the X-Reality engine. What I want to see is once they apply that X-Reality engine, I'm wondering if we're going to be seeing a change in the gamut. I'm wondering if it will resemble what they had promised, at least in their press release. I can foresee it as possible that this could be a wider gamut LCD screen, but they're trying to right now emulate it down closer to sRGB until they release the X-Reality engine, which is supposed to do a lot of different things like add sharpening and make your movies and pictures more clear. So there is totally a ton of processing and interesting calibration on this device, but at least it looks pretty, at least it creates an interesting experience, and I actually really like this phone. And I really like this display as well, despite its really harsh processing. I guess we'll all just have to find out if Sony was bluffing about the gamut or if that will suddenly change, but I seriously doubt it. So thank you everybody for watching. This has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Give this phone a chance. It may not be an accurate media experience, but it certainly is an experience. Have a good night!